are in Los Cabos, Mexico. We are going to find out if you can visit on a budget. We have asked locals and done research in Spanish so you don't have to, to find local recommendations so you can visit on a budget. Los Cabos are two cities in the state of Baja California Sur, only a two to three hour flight from much of the western US. Known as a tourist hotspot for all-inclusive resorts, we're going to try to experience a more local trip on a budget. There's three main areas, Cabo San Lucas, a party city with nightlife and the famous Cabo Arch, the tourist quarter with resorts overlooking the ocean, and San Jose del Cabo, a quieter colonial city, which is where we decided to stay and are starting our morning. We are starting off in San Jose del Cabo because our Airbnb is located right here next to Plaza Mijares, which is the main square. It's where you'll want to start off before you just start wandering the beautiful colonial streets and shopping for artisan goods and visit the mission. We are starting with breakfast though, just a couple blocks from Plaza Mijares called La Panaderia. It was really good, um, maybe not necessarily what I would call super budget friendly, but it was more of like a budget friendly kind of farm to table-esque experience. So for 475 pesos, around $26, we got um, homemade orange juice and Jamaica soda, chilaquiles and bread and a watermelon salad and a chocolate croissant. Everything was really good. The salsa on the chilaquiles was super good. The bread they gave us to eat the salsa with was amazing. It was like a sourdough bread with butter, so good. The watermelon salad, if you've ever had watermelon with tahini or like chile, it's, it's like that, but also with feta and cilantro and sunflower seeds. I, super good and the chocolate croissant was honestly really good too it was flaky and it had a ton of chocolate which is kind of the you know measure of a chocolate croissant in my opinion if it has enough chocolate it tastes great <laughs> so while it wasn't super budget friendly I think for eating here in the centro it was a pretty good price and the food was amazing I loved it if you're looking for more budget friendly options in the centro I would try tacos de Viria Vallarta and Ta Corazon which are both highly recommended but unfortunately both closed on Sundays when we're here or you can leave a centro and go to other areas of San Jose de Cabo where more locals live and get a little bit more of a local experience we are probably gonna have dinner at a place like that because we had food there last night and it was so good like I'm obsessed <laughs> Cabo San Jose is really beautiful. It feels a little catered to tourists. It's beautiful. I think the prettiest streets are um, Alvaro Obregón and it crosses with uh, Morelo. That like intersection is just beautiful all the way around you. So when you're walking and looking for the pretty streets, I'd recommend going there. Also, there's a lot of artisan shops. Everything seems to be similarly priced in all of them. So I asked in a couple stores about nativities that I was interested in. They were all about the same price. Nothing's you know particularly cheap but <laughs> there's a lot of pretty stuff and it's fun the window shop the mission was actually originally built in the 1700s over by the ocean uh, the natives revolted and killed everyone and also it fell down because it was just not a good place for it to be and then they rebuilt it here in um, 1950 so it's not super old if you're here on Thursday you have to go to the art walk the art walk is like just the number one thing people say to do here it's only on thursday nights though so if you're not here on thursday then it kind of doesn't work out the historic area is small it's only a few block radius but it is super hot so wear your sunscreen and drink a lot of water if you need to buy water there's a bank just with one street above the mission and just halfway on that street is a little they call it a mini super so like just like a little mini store and you can get water there we got water a coke and some cheetos for later <laughs> for like 71 pesos which is probably about like four dollars right now it does depend on the exchange so we are super hot. We're gonna <laughs> go inside for a little bit in the AC and rest and then head over to Cabo San Lucas. <music> 
So we drove about 30 minutes from San Jose de Cabo to Cabo San Lucas. We rented a car. It was about $250 for the week. What I would recommend though, <laughs> two tips, book early. I think prices are better when you book early. Second, make sure your rental includes third-party liability insurance. Make sure it lists it on the reservation. Don't believe it if you just call and they say, yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay anything extra. You do. <laughs> make sure it's, unless it says third-party liability on your reservation. But once you get to the marina, we parked in the Puerto Paraiso parking structure. It was 30 pesos for two hours and then 10 pesos for each hour after that. And just as you walk through the mall and you get to the marina, there are people that will want to sell you tours. <laughs> and that's, you know, the main big thing you have to do if you come to Cabo San Lucas is go to see the arch. The guy that first stopped us said 400 pesos, but for you guys, I'll do 300. You know, that's their salesman tactic. And then we were thinking about it because it was a pretty good price and we were about to say no and he said, I'll do two. 50. So say no, see if they lower the price. Um, 250 is about $15 a person and it's about an hour tour and you go out and they just they show you all the different beaches and the arch and you're supposed to go because on one side is the Sea of Cortez, on the other side is the Pacific Ocean and they meet right there on the rock kind of by the arch and you're supposed to go around the other side to the Pacific Ocean side but the water was super rough like <laughs> it was bad you could probably tell with the arch like the waves are normally not that big they have tours like every 20 minutes so you don't have to book one online. I will list one that you can book online that is about the same price if you don't want to wait till you get here and see if you can negotiate any lower than what we paid. Um, that way you just you have it. But it's also nice to have flexibility and you can just go whenever you want to go. Uh, they gave us the option of like 320 or 340. The salespeople are very pushy, so don't feel like you have to buy from them. You know, we ended up buying from the first salesperson. Usually it's not recommended to do that, but buy from the first person to ask around, check prices. But we felt like we got a good price, so we just went with it. Um, so don't let them push you around. Say no if you don't want to. Now we are going to head back down the tourist corridor and stop at the beach. So we're gonna visit all three areas of Los Cabos in one day. So we drove almost back to San Jose. It was probably about 20 minutes to Palmilla Beach. This is a great beach. It's free, free parking. There's some actually little umbrella like stands that you could use if you get here early enough to reserve one. I'm really like that we came later in the evening because it's not as hot, the sun isn't on you, and it's just a beautiful view. We're watching the sunset and the water is pretty warm. I didn't get all the way in, but I kind of got sandy, so I got a little bit in to, to rinse off. The swimming area is more to the left though, so you'll want to go left and there's like this buoyed off area. You can't really swim at all beaches in this area just because the waves are pretty strong and it's not super recommended. They do generally have like marked off areas specifically for swimming. In San Jose del Cabo, I felt like we didn't see a lot of Mexican visitors, Mexican tourists. Definitely a lot more in Cabo San Lucas. Our entire like boat tour was, everyone was Mexican except for me. And then here at the beach, definitely lots I don't know if I'd say like local because I don't know where people are from but definitely more Mexicans here than Americans so I think it's a pretty fun local spot we have I don't know if you can hear but we have somebody like serenading singing playing guitar behind us people bring their food their drinks and just hang out it's a really beautiful beach so definitely recommend it as a stop we didn't really have lunch because we were full from breakfast and we had snacks. We did get an ice cream in the marina. I forgot to mention that. It was about 40 pesos. And we also ate our chips that we bought earlier in the day. So we just kind of snacked in the day and we're gonna go get lunch at the best tacos. We had them last night. They were amazing. So we're going back. Don't wanna risk going somewhere that we don't like. For dinner, we went to a taqueria called Taqueria Lali. It is about six kilometers or about 15 minutes from the the plaza where we're staying so you likely would need a car or would need to uber but it is so good it was so worth it quesadillas are 45 pesos tacos are 35 pesos and they also have something a papa relleno which is a potato with meat and cheese and just a ton of butter they also serve it with tortillas so you like make your little tacos i just i also like to eat it just by the spoonful it was very good uh the papa relleno is 150 pesos so a little bit more but super filling 
Here in the north of Mexico, they eat a lot of flour tortillas, and they are delicious. You don't get that as much in southern or central Mexico. So definitely order the flour tortillas, the carne asada, so good. We spent about 400 pesos tonight, which is about $22. Last night we spent 300 pesos, but we were extra hungry today because we skipped lunch. <laughs> it's very local, it's delicious, highly recommend. Also, the plaza at night in San Jose del Cabo also has a more local feel. There's food vendors, so you can get elotes and snacks and treats as well. Thanks for joining us. Hope that during this video, you feel a bit more confident in visiting on a budget. I know that that really varies depending on where you're from and what your definition of budget travel is. But I think this is a fairly affordable day with most things being free besides the boat tour and the food. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow, we're gonna do a overnight trip to Santiago, the Sierra de la Laguna mountains, and we're gonna visit the town Santiago and do a little bit of um, outdoorsy stuff.